Hey stoners, welcome to another edition of Sticks and Stones Short Takes. I'm your host Brent. Today's short take is a primer on scotch. The scotch has been around for quite a while. Uh, the first recorded evidence of scotch is uh, goes all the way back to 1494. And if you remember the, the rhyme from when somebody like me was in school, Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492, that means scotch was first recorded two years after Columbus discovered North America. Now all scotch is made with malted barley, but there's two kinds of scotch. There's malt whiskey, which is made strictly from malted barley in a pot still, and then there's grain whiskey, which is made from malted barley and a combination of either unmalted whiskey or other cereal grains. Now by law, scotch must be distilled and aged in Scotland, or you can't call it scotch. If you distill it in Scotland and age it in Ireland, it's not scotch. If you distill it in America and age it in Scotland, it's not scotch. And the scotch distillers will come after you if you try to name your Japanese whiskey scotch. Now you may be asking yourself, how does scotch get that distinctive smoky flavor and why is it there? Well, the simple answer is peat. Now I don't mean some guy named peat, I mean P-E-A-T. Peat, it's a combination of moss, dirt, and decomposing vegetation that is prevalent in the bogs of Scotland. And for centuries, Scottish people used this peat in their fires, cooking, warmth, etc. So that's kind of the short answer, but we'll get a little more into it. Now, not all distillers use peat to make scotch, and that's what gives scotch such a vastly different flavor profile from one distiller to another. You may have on one side the heavily smoky peaty Lagavulin, and on the other side the more bright and crisp Glen Morgani or the Glen Levitt. Now I don't think, I don't think there were some Scottish Highlanders 400, 500 years ago sitting around their campfire going, you know, this whiskey tastes really good, but I think it'd be better if we put some dirt in it. That's not exactly how it happens. You see, all whiskey is made by soaking your base grain in water. But it's what you do after that that makes scotch so different. Once the grain starts germinating, you take it out of the water and you spread it out over the top of a fire to dry and the fire is fired with peat moss. So that's where the smoke comes from. That's why they do it because they want to stop the germination of the grain when they take it out of the water. That's where scotch gets its smoky flavor from and that's why they do it. So there you go. Easy answer. Now, you may hear or see when you go into your local liquor store single malt scotch. Well, single malt scotch is scotch that's made from one distillery. Blended scotch is scotch that is blended together from two or more distilleries. My favorite scotch is Johnny Walker Green Label. It's a 15 year age statement. And they will neither confirm nor deny the accuracy of this information, but purportedly they blend whiskey from 27 different distilleries around Scotland to give Johnny Walker Green Label its signature taste. And those don't just come from one area. We'll get a little more into the Scotch regions uh, in a moment, but they basically take Scotch from all around Scotland, all the different areas uh, where it's made, and blend it together in, in one, one barrel, one bottle. And uh, I sure do love it. It's, it's the most delicious Scotch I've ever had. Now, once Scotch is put in a barrel, just like barrel aging here in, in America with bourbon or rye, 
Uh, the longer you age it, the more mellow it gets and the higher up that price goes. But that's what gives it that sweet, mellow, easy to drink flavor as opposed to right out of the still when it would uh, hit the spot and rub the paint off. Now there are basically five different regions around Scotland where scotch is made. The first is Campbelltown. Campbelltown has hints of smoke, salt, fruit, uh, a little vanilla. Uh, then you have Highland Scotch. Uh, there's a, a huge diversity in Highland Scotch because it is geographically the largest scotch making region. So there is a, a lot of different flavor profiles within Highland Scotch. Then you have Islay, spelled I-S-L-A-Y. Islay, which is a small peninsula uh, on the southwest corner of Scotland. And they're known for their heavy peat, fiery profiles, and long smoky finish. Then you have Speyside. Speyside is generally where most of my scotches come from. And they are, are named because of the River Spey that flows through that region, which is where a lot of the water comes from to make those scotches. Uh, now they have a very fruity, crisp flavor of apples, pears, toffee, honey, uh, vanilla, and spice. Then finally you have Lowland Scotch, uh, which is known for its sweet, subtle flavors, easy drinking palate, low peat, kind of a honeysuckle or dried fruit kind of flavors. Uh, so it and Speyside are, are fairly close together as far as the profiles go. Uh, and you can just try around, make, make the rounds, see what you like. Uh, there's lots of choices out there. And speaking of choices, there are 130 distilleries for scotch in Scotland. Now when you look at Scotland on a map, it's nowhere near the size of the United States. They make a lot of scotch in Scotland, but it keeps growing in revenue year over year uh, with some brands running out. Uh, they just can't, they can't keep their, their retailers stocked. Uh, my favorite, Johnny Walker Green Label, you couldn't get it for years. Uh, and then in about three or four years ago, uh, managed to start getting a, a fairly decent supply. Now, some of my favorites, as I've mentioned, Johnny Walker Green Label uh, is a blended scotch. Um, it'll run you about $55 a bottle. Uh, the Glen Levitt, I know I've, I've carried a couple of the, uh, bottles of uh, the Glen Levitt uh, doing my uh, pairing videos. Uh, regular Glen Levitt uh, run you around $40 a bottle. The Glen Levitt 14 year cognac cask will run you about $55 a bottle. Uh, and then Brooklotic. Uh, I can't really tell you how to spell it. It's got a lot of C's in it and a lot of D's and a little bit of <laughs> Uh, it's a very good scotch. Uh, there's actually a film about Brooklotic. Uh, came out in 2019 called Scotch, A Golden Dream. Now I'm not really sure that I think that's a catchy title, but it was a very good documentary. And I would advise you, go on Amazon Prime and watch it. It'll tell you a lot about how scotch is made and really give you a beginning to end for Brooklotic, which uh, has not been around all that long, uh, but has won many awards. I hope that this short primer has maybe fueled your fire a little bit to go out and sample some various scotches, maybe pick up a few bottles, uh, or try it for the first time. Scotch is really good. Uh, it's really great with cigars. It's one of the go-to pairings for just about any cigar. You can pair four or five different alcohols with one kind of cigar, and one of those will more than likely be some kind of scotch. Uh, so I hope that this has given you some insight. I hope that you uh, take this knowledge and go learn more for yourself. If you like this, comment below, hit like, hit subscribe, hit share, all those things keep us going. And I will have another great pairing for you this weekend. But until then, keep your sticks dry and your stones cold.